This is a demonstration on how to refract a patient with a raindrop corneal inlay. There are two very important concepts to remember before you begin. One, dim the room lights as much as possible because pupil size makes a difference in the results. Remember, the raindrop inlay is centered over the light constricted pupil and it's through the center that the greatest steepening and refractive change occurs. If the pupil is too small, you may inadvertently over minus the patient. Similarly, all refractors typically over minus the patients as well. So turn down the lights. Two, the second thing to remember is that the subjective endpoint of the refraction may not be very obvious to the patient. Given the induced profocal shape and resulting in multifocality and spherical aberrations of the cornea, the patient may have a difficult time determining which lens choices are better than others. So take your time, start with large power jumps, and refine as you go along. And now I will demonstrate these techniques on this very handsome and very nice raindrop patient. The inlay is in the left eye, his non-dominant eye. So first I'm going to start with the dominant eye. Okay, can you please tell me which is clearer? Choice one or two? Two. How about three or four? Four. Good. Nice, clear endpoint. Let's switch over to the other side. Okay, and this time please tell me which is clearer. Choice one, two. One. How about three? Or four? Hmm. Um, um, four? Let's try that again. Three? Four? Uh, mm, maybe. Uh, four. Okay. Let's try five or six. Uh, uh, um, I'm not really sure. Again? Um, okay. Five or six? Um, I think six is probably a bit better. Okay. As you can see, this patient's endpoint is not very clean. So, remove the ferropter and verify in free space. So here I have some trial lenses. I have minus one and a plus one. When you put them together, it makes Plano. Okay, so if you can please cover your dominant eye. Okay, and I'm gonna give you three choices. And tell me which is clearer. Choice one, choice two, or three. Three. Good. Okay, make sure your eye is completely covered. And again, this time I have Minus a half, plus a half, and together a plano. Which is clearer? Choice one, choice two, or three? Three. Good. Get a much cleaner endpoint in free space. Now, sometimes it's not uncommon uh, to get an inaccurate astigmatism measurement behind the ferropter. So, if you get an unusual cylinder response, verify it in free space. So, here I have a cylinder lens and you can see the axis lines here. I'm going to angle this to the cylinder response from the from the foropter. So in his case it was minus one axis 30. So I angle this about axis 30 and then I'm just going to show him the cylinder response. Do you prefer with or without? I prefer without. Okay great. So this is a really quick and easy method to determine whether the cylinder is really there. So in summary, dim the lights, take large jumps, and then refine as you go along. Take your time and verify in free space. This is a good method for measuring the refraction of a patient with a raindrop corneal inlay. Aloha. Aloha.